Hello and welcome to another instructional video. Today we're going to be looking at basket weave. I hope you're all looking forward to Christmas as much as I am and don't forget that the giveaway is running until early next week. You still have time to enter but time is running short to win that beautiful Ashford rigid heddle loom and a year's worth of classes on my online weaving school. If you want to check out my school you can have a look at the link below the video. I'll have all my usual links there to social media and uh, my website and all of those other things that I do. So let's get on with this demonstration. There's been a bit of discussion on my Facebook group about basket weave recently. Someone posted a picture and asked about what kind of structure it was and um, if it was possible on a rigid head or loom. Well basket weave is usually woven on four shafts at least but there is this very simplified and very easy to work version that also looks quite beautiful. The key to doing this on a rigid head or loom is to use thin threads because you need to either double, triple or quadruple or more your threads depending on how fine they are. So for my sample I've used a seven and a half dent reed and I've used either 8-2 cotton or 8-2 tensile. I'm going to be taking you through some variations in colour and in densities of threads so that you can get an idea of what you might be able to do with this on a rigid heddle loom. I've already begun warping and I'm warping as if I would normally for plain weave. The only difference is instead of having one thread that I'm taking through at a time, I'm actually taking four threads through at a time. So if you look down to the floor, you can see that I have this cone has a single thread, this one has a single thread and this one I'm using here has a double thread. So to get your four threads or whether you're doing three threads or two threads, it's up to you, but you will need to um, either have more than one cone or you will need to reel off onto another cone or make a little ball like I have for this one. This one is left over from another weaving project. I just happened to have doubles wound on there so that was handy for me. And so back up to the warp. I'm doing a very short warp because it's just a demonstration one but we are just simply warping like usual but with four times the amount of threads. Only real thing to look out for here is that some of the threads will come off whatever you're using whether it's a reel or a ball or whatever some of them will come off at different tensions so you want to try and maintain the same tension for all of your threads while you're warping. They can tend to here we go loop or you know one will come off more quickly than another one and in that case we just need to make sure that they're tensioned at the same rate. When it comes to winding the shuttle you're going to be doing the same thing that you did with the warp using four threads instead of one. The easiest way to deal with all of these is to just make a slip knot as though you would with one thread. Slip that onto the end and tie them together securely. Then you can start winding your shuttle and just like with the warp the only thing you really need to look out for is threads becoming loose so you want them to wind on at a consistent tension not like a really tight tension or anything like that just consistent firm consistent so you'll be winding off the same balls you're using before if you're using the same colored yarn When we come to threading we once again are doing threading for plain weave but this time it's a little bit different because we're going to have to separate our threads into groups of four because we have eight ends in each slot now. So I'll just carefully separate them into groups of four and just the same as plain weave I'm going to lift one group up, one comes down and it can be a little bit trickier to thread through the hole 
but if you just slow down a little bit normally I thread pretty fast when I'm threading plain weave and I'm going to take a bit more time to do this one You can see now too why we would not be wanting to use threads that are really thick because if I had four very thick threads trying to get them through the hole they may not all want to go. It's okay, it's fine for the thinner threads like this H2 cotton but for something thicker um, if it was a DK weight or a worsted weight you'd have a lot of trouble getting them through the hole and then you would end up with friction issues while you were weaving and you'd have broken threads and all of that so just stick to the finer threads for this and you will be fine when you finish threading it's worth having a double check first to check that you have four threads in each hole and in each slot so just to go through and have a quick visual check or if you're really unsure you can actually separate them and count each one if you want to and then pull your warp tight from the front and have a look behind the back of the reed there and make sure that everything looks in place um, if there is for example one of these threads might be hanging out because you missed it when you were threading through the hole that can happen very easily when you've got more than one or two threads so just have a check of that before you go on and then go on to tying make sure you separate your warp for a start and then after that it's just the same as it is for plain weave so um, just in the up shed watching my edges down shed and if you've wound on with pretty good tension if you've wound onto your shuttle that is the threads are pretty good at keeping themselves aligned so you can actually see the separate threads I know some people get worried that they'll get all twisted up because there are so many of them uh, but they really don't you see they just lay out beautifully four in a row I'm not beating too heavily just a regular even beat for a balanced weave Pretty simple huh so remember you can do this with um, you can double your threads you can triple your threads you can quadruple your threads as I have even more than that if you want to depending on how fine your yarn is to give you an idea of what sort of variations you can do with this this time I've wound my shuttle with three threads of 82 in a sort of peacock blue color and two threads of hand dyed tensile just for something different and they're all an 82 weight so this time five threads all together I always think that green and blue look beautiful together And um, the tensile has little bits of purple and stuff in it, so it's just a slight variation. I love tensile, it's one of my favourites. And it takes dye beautifully if you dye it yourself. So that's another simple variation that would look beautiful as a little border or for the entire piece you could do the entire piece like that
then if I wanted to I could do something like bring the green back in let's see let's loop it underneath there so that it catches on the edge Making sure they're all at the same tension, which they're not. Come on, where are you? Yeah, that's better. And then I could do, say, two green. And two blue. Thing I could do is one green and I would need to cut my blue from here come in on the opposite side to do singles And I could go with the green again. And back to blue. I'm getting near the end of my warp here. That's why it's hard for me to get a shed. Just put on a really short warp for demonstrating. And then onto green again. So because of the finer lines, if you're looking at this from a distance, you probably can't appreciate the kind of basket weave structure because from a distance it just these actually look like one thread but when you get up close and have a look you can see the individual threads that's when you see how nice the pattern is so this is really great for things like um, baby blankets it's a nice soft gentle fabric that's lovely for babies then yet another variation would be to use a single thread in the weft this would give you an unbalanced weave but could be quite interesting as well so this is a single of the tensile that I was using before in in this group here I'm just using a little yarn butterfly because well because I was too lazy to wind a shuttle but this looks quite interesting too especially with something like tensel that has this beautiful sheen to it so there you are Feel free to warp up your loom and have a little experiment with any of the things that I've mentioned and see what you can come up with yourself. Till next time, happy weaving.